Border prints are a little more complicated to work with than regular repeats. In today's video, I'm going to show you the best way to set up and fill in your border prints on fashion sketches and how to add movement too. So let's get started. So here I have my fashion sketch that I drew to look like one of these flowy boho maxi dresses that come in all these beautiful border prints. These border print styles really stand out because they look like they have several different prints mixed in with one another. Really, these prints are all within the same fabric. So let's first go over how a border print is constructed and how you need to set up your artwork to fill in your sketch properly. I've already started constructing a print to put on the dress. First off, you need to understand that border prints are different than regular repeats because they usually only repeat in one direction. The fabric usually has a border either on one of the edges or sometimes on both of the edges and it has other patterns in between the borders. So going in the vertical direction, you don't have to create a repeat because there will be no repeat here. There will just be a continuous non-repeating pattern that goes from edge to edge of the fabric. So the vertical size of your repeat should be the same size as your fabric width. In this case, I'm using a 58 inch wide fabric, so I made my pattern 58 inches in height. But from side to side, horizontally, we do need to create a repeat. If you don't know how to make a repeat, you can check out my how to create a seamless repeat video linked in the description. And for a border print, you would follow those same exact steps, but you would just ignore the steps for the vertical part of the repeat since we don't need a vertical repeat. So for the horizontal repeat that we do need to create, I've decided to make my repeat 12 inches. And just like a regular repeat, we're gonna make sure to have a background box with the background color in the exact size of the repeat and behind that, an invisible bounding box also in the exact size of the repeat. And both boxes will be aligned perfectly with the artboard. So now let's copy that repeat into the sketch file. I've grouped the whole repeat so we can just touch on one part of the print with the selection tool and hit Ctrl C to copy and we'll go to our other file with the fashion sketch, zoom out, and hit Ctrl V to paste the repeat into the file. Now as you can see, the repeat is really large and the sketch is really small. So what we need to do is shrink the repeat down to approximately the size that it would be if it were the same scale as the dress. So a long ankle length dress like this would be approximately 52 inches long from the high point of the shoulder down to the bottom. And we know that I had made the actual size repeat 58 inches in height. So when we shrink our pattern down, we want the height to be about six inches longer than the dress. Now we don't need to be exact here as this is just a sketch for a presentation, but we're gonna just eyeball it to get it approximately to that size. So we're gonna right click, hit transform, scale, and you can try typing in a significantly smaller scale. And if it's still too big, we can shrink it down even more until we get the size that we want. And we'll move the repeat over here next to the dress and that looks about right. It looks like it's just a few inches longer than the dress, which is what we want. So now that we've got the proportion right, let's go ahead and drag that pattern into the swatches panel to make it a repeat. And we're gonna keep the repeat here next to the dress because we're gonna need that to be there later. Then let's make a big rectangle to test the repeat. Now normally, I would do this on the repeat file, but since this pattern was so big, I wanted to do the testing on the smaller version so as to not overload my illustrator. So when we test it out, what we want to check is that the pattern repeats seamlessly horizontally. As I explained before, there is no vertical repeat on a border print. But since Illustrator doesn't have an option to only repeat a pattern in one direction, when we test our pattern, you'll see that it looks irregular vertically because we didn't make it seamless vertically. However, that's totally fine. You can just ignore that, and I'll show you how to deal with that when we fill in our sketch right now. So let's go to our garment now, and I'm gonna use the direct selection tool to select on one part of the garment. I'm gonna click on select same fill color to select all of the parts that are filled in with white, which are all of the parts that I wanna fill in with my pattern. And then I'm gonna click on the swatch that I just made right now to fill everything in. As you can see, the pattern doesn't look right here. It looks like there's a mistake here because of the fact that we don't actually have a vertical repeat. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place the pattern where we actually want it to be. So with everything still selected, hold down the tilde key on your keyboard. The tilde key is this wavy looking symbol usually found near the number one on your keyboard. 
Hold that down and we'll take our selection tool and just drag our pattern up so that the top edge of the pattern, where it looks broken here, goes up past the top part of the garment so that it disappears and is out of sight. And since we've kept this repeat next to the garment, we can see where we want the pattern to land on the dress. And we can use that repeat that's next to the garment as a guide to line up the pattern that we have within the garment. So what we're making sure of is that this top part of the print is here on the top of the garment. And then we have this other part of the pattern here on this part. And then we have this top border pattern here on this panel. And then we have our bottom border part here on this bottom panel and that it's placed exactly where we want it. So now let's tackle the sleeve placement. We're gonna select on just one sleeve. You're gonna have to decide what part of the pattern do you want on your sleeves. Sometimes with these types of dresses, the sleeve will be made with the top part of the print that matches the top part of the garment. If that's the case, then you already have the print where you want it. But you still need to rotate the pattern so that it's aligned properly with the way that we would cut the sleeve. So take your direct selection tool to select this first sleeve. Select the rotate tool from the toolbar. And if you don't see it, it's probably hiding behind the reflect tool. So just click on the little black arrow to get the rotate tool to show up and select it. Now hold down the tilde key and drag on the pattern on the sleeve to rotate the pattern to the correct angle. Another way you might wanna place your pattern on your sleeve is to have part of the bottom border on the bottom edge of the cuff. In this case, We'll select the sleeve with the direct selection tool. We'll hold down the tilde key and use the selection tool to drag the pattern up until we can see the bottom border. And when I have as much of that part of the pattern as I want on my sleeve, then I'll also need to rotate the pattern so that it's aligned properly with the way that we would cut the sleeve. So with the sleeve still selected, we can rotate it in the same way that we just did before, or we can right click, hit transform, rotate, Make sure only transform patterns is checked. Click preview and scroll through the angles until we get the angle that we want. Rotate the pattern until the border is parallel with the bottom of the sleeve and click OK. And if it's not exactly where you want it to be, if you still want to move it up or down some more, then just do like we did before and select the selection tool, hold down the tilde key and drag your pattern in any direction that you want to move it. You can also hold down the tilde key and use the arrows on your keyboard to make more controlled movements. Now for the other sleeve, we can do the same thing, just moving the pattern up to where we want it and then rotating the pattern on this sleeve the opposite way. And you can use your guides to position the border in the same place as the other sleeve. So if I wanna make sure that this part here hits at exactly the same place and on the same level, just put the guide here next to it on the first sleeve and then we'll use that as a guide so that we'll know how much to move up our print on the second sleeve. Now, if you have a border print that has a very obvious striped band like this, it's gonna be a little hard to place this exactly how it would be since the stripe is straight here. And most of the time, these dresses are sketched with curved wavy lines to simulate the drape of the dress. So how can we get the striped band to follow that curved shape? Well, we're gonna use a special technique to achieve that. It'll take a few extra steps, but it'll be worth it to create the right effect. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now, but real quick, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and please subscribe. It'll help me to keep bringing you more useful videos like this. Okay, so now let's use our special technique starting with the top border panel. So on the flat sketch, we're going to touch that first panel and double click on it to get it into isolation mode. Now go to the layers panel, click on the flyout menu, and select Duplicate Layer. Now on the duplicate layer that you just created, remove the fill. Now lock both of those layers and use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle shape that's approximately the size of the dress panel that you're working with. Use any solid color at first and drag the rectangle layer down so that it's in between the two dress panel layers. Then we're gonna select the swatch that we made of the border print. So you see this box is now filled with the print but we need to reposition the print inside the box so that we can only see the part of the print that we want to fill into this panel. So we can just press on the tilde key and drag the print up to where we want it to be. In this case, we need to make sure that the striped band is on the very top edge of the rectangle shape. 
and we need to reduce the height of the box so that we can only see as much of the pattern as there should be within this panel. So we'll just drag over the bottom edge of the rectangle with our direct selection tool and either drag up or use our up arrow key on our keyboard to shorten the box and bring it up to where we want the pattern to end on the panel. And once you've got that down, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna rasterize this box, which is something that we need to do before we can use our special technique. The technique that we're gonna use is called envelope distort. Envelope distort is a great technique to use, but it can sometimes break your pattern or do some other strange things to your patterns. Mostly when you're dealing with really complicated patterns like this border print. So in order to avoid that issue, that's why we want to rasterize the pattern before using envelope distort. So with the rectangle selected, let's go up to object, rasterize, and choose 300 PPI, art optimize, and click OK. Now your pattern is rasterized. Now when you rasterize it, you have to know that it's no longer going to work like a pattern swatch anymore. So you won't be able to switch this pattern out with other patterns, at least not just by clicking on it. But that's okay in this scenario, and I'll show you how to deal with that later. So now that I've rasterized this, I'm going to select my printed box, hold shift, and select the part of the dress panel that we have on the layer that's above it. That dress panel shape is what we'll call the top object. And now I'm going to go to Object, Envelope Distort, and click on Make with Top Object. And see what happened? This caused my border print to conform to the shape of the top object. So now the striped band is completely parallel to the curved shapes of the sketch. And it's also perfectly cropped to fit within the dress panel shape. That's exactly what we wanted. Cool, right? Now this acted somewhat like a clipping mask, and it removed the black outline. So if you want the black outline back, you can unlock the original dress panel layer, click on it, and remove the fill so that it only contains a black outline. Then drag that layer so that it's on top of the envelope print panel. And now you have a black outline again. So now we're going to do the same exact thing with the bottom border, so this will give you a chance to practice this again. Okay, so now we're going to select the bottom border panel on the sketch and double click on it to get it into isolation mode. Now go to the layers panel, click on the flyout menu and select duplicate layer. Now on the duplicate layer that you just created, remove the fill. Now lock both of those layers and use the rectangle tool to create a rectangle shape that's approximately the size of the dress panel that you're working with. Use any solid color at first and drag the rectangle layer down so that it's in between the two dress panel layers. Then we're going to select the swatch that we made of the border print. So you see this box is now filled with the print, but we need to reposition the print inside the box so that we can only see the part of the print that we want to fill into this panel. So we can just press on the tilde key and drag the print up to where we want it to be. In this case, we need to make sure that the striped band is on the very top edge of the rectangle shape. And we need to reduce the height of the box so that we can only see as much of the pattern as there should be within this panel. So we'll just drag over the bottom edge of the rectangle with our direct selection tool and either drag up or use our up arrow key on our keyboard to shorten the box and bring it up to where we want the pattern to end on the panel. And once you've got that down, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna rasterize this box so we'll go to Object, Rasterize to rasterize the print. Now that it's rasterized, we're going to select the print and hold Shift to also select the dress panel shape that's on top of it, which is our top object. And we're going to go to Object, Envelope Distort, and click on Make with Top Object. And once we do that, voila! Now we've also gotten the bottom border striped band to follow the curved shape of the bottom panel and it fits perfectly into the shape. And if you want your black outline back, just follow the same process as before. Unlock the original dress panel layer, click on it, and remove the fill so that it only contains a black outline. Then drag that layer so that it's on top of the envelope print panel, and now you have a black outline again. Now I just wanna show you quickly how you would change or add another colorway of this print because that's something that we do a whole lot in fashion design. Because we used two different techniques to fill the pattern on this dress, it's just going to be slightly different than the usual way. 
So let's make a copy of the whole dress by selecting the whole dress and holding Alt Shift and dragging it over to make a copy. And I've already prepared my swatches of the entire border print in the second colorway. So let's lock the first dress so that we're just working with the second dress. We're gonna click on one part of the print with our direct selection tool. We're gonna go up to select same fill color, which is gonna select everything that's filled in with that pattern. And we're gonna click on the entire border print in the second colorway in our swatches panel. Now immediately it changes everything that's in this print into the second colorway of the print that I just selected, except for the two border panels at the bottom. And the reason that it didn't change the color of these two panels or that it didn't select these two panels in the first place is because remember that we had to rasterize these parts in order to get the envelope distort to work properly. So like I mentioned before, these parts are not gonna work like regular pattern swatches. So in this case, we're gonna have to delete the prints that are in these two panels here. You can do that by clicking on the first panel, going to Object, Envelope Distort, Release. And that will bring this back to the rasterized box with the pattern, and your dress panel will be a solid gray shape here. So just touch the box with the pattern and hit the Delete key on your keyboard to delete it. Then to input your new colorway of the border print, do this. Double click on the gray shape to put it into isolation mode. Then we're gonna repeat the basic process that we did before but with the new colorway of the pattern. So make a rectangle in any solid color. Fill it with the pattern in the new colorway. So you see this box is now filled with the print, but we need to reposition the print inside the box so that we can only see the part of the print that we want to fill into this panel. So we can just press on the tilde key and drag the print up to where we want it to be. In this case, we need to make sure that the striped band is on the very top edge of the rectangle shape and we need to reduce the height of the box so that we can only see as much of the pattern as there should be within this panel. So we'll just drag over the bottom edge of the rectangle with our direct selection tool and either drag up or use our up arrow key on our keyboard to shorten the box and bring it up to where we want the pattern to end on the panel. And once you've got that down, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna rasterize this box. Go to Object, Rasterize to rasterize it. Then do Arrange, Center Back to get it behind your gray shape. The gray shape must be on top. Now select both the rasterized pattern and the gray shape. Go to Object, Envelope Distort, Make with Top Object, and there you go. You did it again with the new colorway. Repeat the same process for the bottom border, and now you have a whole new colorway of your border print dress. Now I know that last part may have seemed like a little bit of a hassle, but in this case, I think it's really worth it to get the striped band following the dress shape and getting a more realistic effect on your border print dress. And for anybody who's having issues with the pattern placement moving around when you move your garment around, that really shouldn't happen. And there's a really simple way to fix that. Before you attempt to move your dress anywhere, you need to check this one important thing. Go up here to the control panel, click on preferences, and make sure that transform pattern tiles is checked. If it's not, then check it and click OK. And once you make sure that that's checked and you go back to your artboard, when you move your dress, you should be able to move your sketch around to anywhere that you want and your pattern will not move from where you placed it on the garment. So I hope that helped. And if you want to keep learning how to make prints like a pro, then check out the rest of my print pattern playlist. See you there.